Okay, so today we'll be discussing about uh, chapter six of the book, uh, which is about uh, fitting models uh, using the FastNet uh, package uh, from the tidy model. Uh, so like for the objective uh, for today's discussion, uh, we are going to be looking at identify ways in which uh, model interfaces uh, can differ. We are also going to look at specify a model uh, uh, how to fit a model uh, using uh, the Parsnip uh, package. Uh, we are also going to look at fit a model with Parsnip, uh, Parsnip uh, fit, and also Parsnip fit underscore X, Y. We are going to compare uh, these two uh, workflow when we are uh, fitting the model using the Parsnip uh, package. Uh, we are also going to describe how uh, how Parsnip uh, generalizes uh, the model argument. So, so we are also going to look at how we can use uh, Broom for package using the tidy to convert a model object uh, to a tidy uh, structure uh, so that we can uh, use uh, that object uh, to proceed for maybe visualization. Uh, we are also going to look at how uh, the deep layer bind calls and the predict method from Parsnip to make tidy uh, predictions out we can make tidy predictions uh, using those two uh, combination of those two functions then we are going to find the interfaces to other models uh, in personally that uh, that has to do with the adjacent package because there are some additional packages uh, in which uh, they also depend on extend the tidy model so for this uh, modeling map uh, this is uh, where we are coming from uh, the tidyverse we use uh, ggplot2 uh, to do our uh, data visualization then we have seen how we can use the the r sample uh, package how we can use it uh, to split our data sets into what train and also test sets and we also saw how we can deal with a class uh, imbalance last week where we use the strata then we are also going to be using the recipe package uh, for uh, for future engineering. Then we are because we are going to be tuning some hyperparameter. But for today, this is where we are for today. Uh, we are going to be looking at how we are going to use uh, the Parsnip package uh, to fit our, our models in R. Then from that, we also uh, in subsequent discussion we will look at yardstick, which is like. Uh, uh, different model evaluation using uh, different uh, metrics. Then we are going to look at, uh, we're also going to also discuss the tidy predict. Then we, we are going to see how at the end, how we are going to deploy our model uh, using Plumber. I think the latest is the Vetiva. If I'm to be corrected, I think there is Vetiva in which we can also use uh, to deploy our model. So, uh, for the chapter setup, uh, we can set up first, we need to load the tidy model. This is the data set because we are using the AMES housing data sets. Uh, so we just need to call the data, the AMES data. Then we need to convert uh, the sale price. We need to uh, uh, convert it to, we need to lock transform the sale price so that it will be normally distributed. Then we are setting a random seed. Then we are going to split the data into both uh, splits the data, specifying the proportion to be 80% to go for the train set, then 20% uh, to go for the test set. Then we are stratifying by the straight sale price. Then we are going to grab all the training data set using the training, uh, ap applying the training function from the R sample package to the AMS split. This is going to split uh, the data into into the train sets, then we are going to grab uh, the test set. So that, that is just uh, the setup from what where we are coming from from our previous uh, discussion. So for uh, for the next part here, yeah, the book kind of say that uh, there are different interface of when we creating model in R. So we we can use carrots, we can use uh, uh, several other packages, but this model in which we are creating. Uh, they are they come they might come with different uh, different type of what outputs. So the beauty uh, the beauty of using a tidy model is that we always know that we are going to, 
we always know by hand the, the outputs. We are going to know the type of outputs in which we are going to get uh, for, for that uh, specific model because it's like a unifying framework for, for, for modeling uh, using the R ecosystem. So, uh, so the model interfaces, uh, we can, as I said earlier, they have different implementation and different interface for modeling uh, in R. Just uh, like the linear regression can be implemented in many ways, we can use uh, the, the ordinary least square. We can also use, uh, okay. We can also use uh, the regularized uh, regression. Uh, for the, just like for the base R, we have the stats. So they takes, uh, this one takes, it takes a formula. It also takes uh, inputs as a data frame. So we just need to say we want to do a linear model. We call the formula. So we, where we are going to pass in the formula, then the data, then the dot, dot, dot shows that there are some additional arguments uh, that can still go in uh, to the function. But if we, we do not want to, if we want to use uh, the GlimeNets, uh, the GlimeNets syntax, it takes both X, Y, uh, interface, but this one does not use a, a data frame, but rather it's going to use a matrix. So for the X is a matrix, we pass in a matrix. For the Y, we pass in a vector. So for the family, uh, we are using the Gaussian family. So, so how these are all uh, the syntax uh, using different modeling framework, uh, different packages in R. So how do that model uh, coming to this syntax. So like in 30 model, we adjust for model uh, specification. So uh, let's say we have a, a, ve a vehicle body, which is like a, we want to use this as our model in which uh, we want to build. This is a model we want to build. Uh, it can be, this vehicle body can be a linear regression. It can be a random forest model uh, that we want to build. Then the next thing for us to do, if we have gotten this uh, modeling, ob modeling object, which is like the body of the vehicle, the next thing is for us to pipe it to the engine. We need to select uh, the engine. And for us to select the engine, we are using the set underscore engine. And within this set underscore engine, we are going to specify a uh, different engine in which uh, we are using uh, for our modeling. If it is a linear model, it's going to be LM. Uh, if it is GlimeNets, it's GlimeNets, RPATS, or Ranger. So we, we need to just, once you set the engine, uh, like for the mode, the mode depends on the type of uh, response variable in which we are dealing with. Because if we have all the response variable, they are continuous, we know that uh, we are going to have regression, but if we have a classification problem, so when we have like zeros and one, yes and no, we know in that case uh, we have we are dealing with a classification problem. So the, for the set mode, uh, we are going to use a classification. We are going to use a classification. But the tidy model uh, package it has a good add-in in the R Studio ID in which we can use uh, that add-in uh, to just give us a skeletal structure of this model. We can use it to uh, fit uh, this uh, model rather than we thinking on how do we go from here to this step, we can just get that, then we just move straight to the fitting uh, process. So, so for the tidy model, model specification and tidy model using PASNIP, uh, the philosophy is to unify and make interface uh, more predictable. We, can, we are bringing everything that are coming found in uh, heterogeneous package. We are seeing how we can unify everything together. So, so we always specify the model type. So we say, uh, here yeah, we can say we are using the linear uh, regression. We can also specify that we are using uh, the random forage. So for the engine, we just need to, we need to specify uh, the engine that we want to use to build our model. Then for the mode, the mode can either be one of either regression or classification based on the type of response uh, variable in which we have uh, in our data. So uh, the example in which uh, they gave in this uh, year we are having 
for the model, the, the model is a linear regression and then the sets are the engine to be LM because we are dealing with a linear model. So these objects, are they assign it into a new variable called LM model spec. So what we call the LM model spec is going to show us that we are using a linear regression model uh, specification, which is regression and computational engine is LM. So we have seen that this is a, a linear model, but we have not fitted uh, the model yet, but we are building it skeleton skeletal structure of the model in which uh, we are working with. So for, for fitting the model, we just need to use either the fits function or fits underscore x, y. They said this delays creating dummy variable and has underlying model uh, function. So, so like the fits, this one we just need to pass in, uh, we just need to pass in the formula of our model, just specify the formula and specify where the data is coming from. So we have LM form fits, we have LM model spec, and then we say fits, we want to fit. So we specify the formula, is sale price explained by longitude plus latitude, then the data is what AMES train because we have AMES train. So this creates a domain fit using X, Y syntax. So this, we are still calling the LM uh, model spec. And then we say fit X, Y. Here we said X should be AMES strain. And then we select within the AMES strain, we want to select the longitude and also uh, the latitude. And then we say Y, it should be AMES strain. And then we want to pull, we want to pull down all the prices that we can get uh, from the AMES train data. So we want to use this when we call LM XY fits is going to show us uh, the specification of that uh, fit. So, but here they do specify their generalized model arguments. Like uh, they do explain here that we have sampled argument, we can have sampled uh, predictors uh, we can have uh, the number of trees, we can have data points to split, but when we are using the ranger, so when we are using the ranger, there we are going to have M try, which is like the number of tries that we want uh, to try the model. We, are, we can have the number of trees, we can also have the minimum node size when we are dealing with data point to split, but in random uh, forest, these two, they are still this, uh, they are similar. We still have M try, which is the number of try, the number of tree, uh, the node, the node size. But when we are using sparkly R, we can have future underscore subset uh, category. We could still have number of trees, minimum instance uh, per node. So we can see that uh, diff using uh, different uh, modeling, different model uh, lean, uh, uh, framework, Ranger, Random Forest, and Sparkly R, we can see that uh, we do not have a unified interface because the arguments that are going in to those uh, modeling framework, uh, they are not, they are slightly different. So we can also have argument like sample predictors, trees, and also data point to splits. This is a parsnip model we are using. For In parsnip, we are only having M try trees and minimum n. So this is for the parsnip interface, which is what we are will be working with when dealing when we are using uh, the tidy model. So we can see that tidy model was able we are we are able to unify this different argument we find in different uh, modeling package. So our tidy model was able uh, to unify everything to just say we have m try we have trees and add. Uh, minimum and minimum n. So this model in which we are building, in order for us to see the, how this model is implemented in R uh, using the Parsnip package, uh, we just need to add a new argument called translate. So when we add this translate to this uh, pipeline in which we are building, it's going to uh, translate uh, this model 
uh, using the PASNIP uh, specification. It shows that yes, this is a linear model specification uh, using regression. And it also showed that the computational engine is LM. It shows that model fits uh, templates. It shows stats, LM, formula, missing argument, data is missing argument, weight is missing out of this are just placeholder because we are still in the process. We have not fitted the model yet. These values are just placeholder in which at the end, once we are fitting the actual model, we, we can replace it with the actual uh, values in which we have. And here, is still, this is still the same, uh, but rather we are saying linear regression. We say penalty is equals uh, to one, and then we set engine to be GlimeNet, and then when we, we translate, it's still going to give us uh, the same, but the only difference is that the family here uh, is Gaussian. It's using the Gaussian family. So I don't know if uh, there are any comments or further contribution before we go uh, over to the next part of the discussion. Um, for me, it's okay to continue. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so now, uh, for in order for us to see the model after fitting uh, our model, in order for us to be able to get the output of our model, because we need uh, the output of our model to be a tidy, uh, uh, tidy data frame, which is a table. So in order for us to do that, we just need to use functions that are coming from the broom package, this tidy, and also the glance, I think there is also the augment uh, function. So, but when we use tidy, it has a bunch of versatility, but for our context, it can take our model object and return our model coefficient into a nice uh, table. So we just need to say broom tidy. Uh, what do we want to tidy is LM form fit, which is a model we have fitted, and then can it our cable, which is going to return this tape nice, uh, uh, from nicely formatted table, which shows that this is the term, this is the intercept, this is the longitude, this is the latitude, these are the estimate of the model, this is the standard error uh, statistics, and also the probability, the probability uh, value. So, so, but when we use uh, the glance, glance allows us in this context to convert our modeling summary statistics into a table. So. We just say broom, glance, LM form fits, and then we use cable to convert it into a table. It shows that this is the R square value. This is the adjusted R square value. This is value of the sigma. This is statistics, P value, degree of freedom, log likelihood, and also the AIC value, which is which shows uh, the goodness uh, of fits of our model in which we have uh, fitted. So this part talks about how do we make uh, how do we make uh, predictions because by right after fitting our model, you know initially we splitted our data into our train and test set. So how do we make prediction from this uh, model object in which uh, we have built? So in other case, we need to create another data set, MS test. And then we slice it, we slice the first five rows, and we save that into Ames test as small. So we now call predict. We need to call predict on our fitted up model. So LM form fit. So the new data in which we want to predict is Ames test small, and then can it are double. So once we do this, uh, we are going to get the five predicted value, which is nice table. Uh, we are going to get the five predicted value and it's going to arrange in the same order, just like the inputs that we are passing uh, to the predict function. Is The beauty of this is going to be well formatted and it's going to return a table as a return object. So we can also have MS test small and then we select all the sale price, and then we are binding using the bind calls uh, from uh, Diplar. So here we say predict on LM form fits. 
the new data is AMES test, uh, AMES test uh, small, and then we are also binding the call on predicts, LM form fits, AMES test small. So the type should be predict int. And then we are calling Kabul to return it as a table. So this is going to show us, this is the sale price. Uh, this is a predicted sale price. Uh, this is the lower confidence intervals. This is also uh, the upper confidence interval for our predictions in which uh, we made. So that is how we can do run predictions uh, from the tidy model using uh, just calling the predict on our fitted object, which is LM form fit. Then we pass in, we just need to pass in uh, the new data, which is AMES uh, test more. Then we bind the calls. So for binding the call, we say the predict should be on this. This is the new data. We want the types to be predict int because they are different in the book. I think uh, they, discuss, they discuss on different uh, type of uh, pre uh, predictions objects, how we can pass it, uh, how we can pass it, how we can pass it. So I think I saw, okay, yeah. They talk about when we have numeric is numeric matrix. When we have class, is class matrix we are going to get back when we have probability numeric matrix probability is going to be 3d uh numeric arrays that is of three of three levels okay so this one talks about uh the tidy models ad adjacent package these are packages that are adding uh, that are extending uh, the tidy model, but they have functionalities uh, that are adding more features to the tidy model. Just like the, the discrete package as a new mathematical model to our arsenal of tools. So this one is adding the discrete flexible and then mathematical models, or if we are using my, my terrible analogy, the car body. So this one, uh, this this screen package, so we just need to set the engine to X. So the example, so but we first need to install. Uh, we need to install. We need to install the uh, the this screen package uh, from GitHub. Then we load uh, the library. So this is a parabolic grid. So we say expand uh, dot grid from base. We say X1 should be sequence that ranges from uh, minus five uh, to five and the length should be uh, 100. Then X2 should be a sequence. The same from minus, it should run from minus five to five. The length dot output should be still 100. So this is a, our parabolic grid that we, we just create. So, we call the discrete flexible. Number of terms should they specify it to be three, and then they set the engine uh, to 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 add, and then they fit the model. The response variable is class tilde dot tilde dot means that every other variable are going to be the independent variable in the model, and they say the data should be parabolic, the data is parabolic. So the object we have model object is FDA mod. So when we say parabolic grid dollar sign FDA, so we can now run predict on FDA mod, para, we call the parabolic, uh, parabolic grid type should be probability, which is gonna be predicted class uh, one predicted class one. So for us to uh, see this uh, workflow, uh, we need to visualize it. So first we are loading uh, the ggplot2, then we call ggplot2 functions. So we call our data should be parabolic aesthetics, x, we pass in uh, both the x and y aesthetics. The geometry, we said it should be points. Then aesthetics, we say color, 
by class, then alpha should be 0.5. Then we are using geom contour to draw the contour on the plot. Then we say data uh, is parabolic grid aesthetics. Z is FDA. Then we say color should be black and the number of breaks, it should be 0 0.5. Then we are using the B, team BW. Then they say legend or position, we place it at the top. Then we are using the code uh, equal uh, function. So once we do that, we can now see, we can now see that we have our parabolic uh, grids so that we have two classes, class one and class two. This is X1 and this is, this is X2, this is, X1 coordinates, so we can see the different uh, points, which shows uh, the classification. This is for class, class two, and also class one. And this, this our our parabolic uh, grid. So for the like the discriminant uh, package, so it, the package can be accessed uh, through this link uh, that is in the book, the discriminant package in which uh, I they loaded earlier on. So for, for, so for like the summary of a uh, summary of the uh, chapter, I say we say we create a common interface because all models are comprised of some core components. That is, we can have mathematical model, we can have engine implementation, we can have mode if needed. We can also have some other arguments uh, that can go into, into the, the model in which uh, we are building. We can also have main algorithms, which is specific. We can have trees, M try, and also penalty. We can also have engine package, which is, we can have verbose and number of threads. But for the predicted behavior, it's always table in table out. We can also have same number of observation return for, for predicts because once we, we are using uh, the predicts, we always know that uh, we always know the expected output in which we are going to get uh, from, from the predicts using the predicts function to make prediction uh, from the model in which uh, we have uh, developed. Uh, using uh, the tidy uh, model ecosystem, which is uh, slightly different from other uh, heterogeneous uh, packages in which we talk about uh, in the introduction part. I think, uh, I think that is all for this uh, chapter. This chapter is a bit quite uh, short, but it's, I think it's straightforward. It's, Hello. Yeah, I gave the uh, claps uh, a emoji reaction. <laughs> okay. Very nice. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I think we can stop. Okay. Um, I have.